afternoon. Tommy Darrell with CarCrazyCentral.com. Coming to you from beautiful Knoxville, Tennessee with the NSRA and the National Street Rod Association. We are your portal to the greatest street rod and hot rod shows in the country. We're here at Knoxville. Come on inside. there was going to be 3,000 cars. Take a look down the hill. This is just the foyer to today's event. There's a little bit of everything here in Knoxville. I'm going to hit the engine buffet. I'm here with Marketing Director Jim Rollett of the NSRA. How are you doing, Jim? Doing good. Good. We just saw him in Oklahoma City where he was telling us a little bit about what it takes to qualify to be a street rod, which is a pre-49 car with some kind of updates generally. Why don't you tell us what we might see here that's going to be a little bit different than what we just saw in Oklahoma City? Well, a lot of the cars are the same. We have the classic 32s, 33s, 34s, but this part of the country we see a lot of the uh, larger vehicles, the Buicks and Chryslers and those kind of vehicles in this part of the country. Is the event itself getting bigger or smaller over the years? As cars get older, fewer of them on the road. What's What have you seen in the last few years? Well, the event, as far as the participation, has stayed very consistent. We're over 3,000 cars here, which is uh, uh, where we've been for several years. Uh, we look for more, but uh, that's where we're at now. Okay, and what is it that makes pre-49? Who chose 49, or what determined 1949? There's two major things that occurred in 1949. Uh, the, the manufacturers did away with running boards, and they did away with the uh, bolt-on rear fenders uh, on cars. Everything went to a more streamlined type effect. So 48 was the last year that, uh, that we had those things. Everyone went in 49. We're going to check out some of the rods today. Thank you so much for your time, Jim. You bet. Glad you're here. Glad to be here. One of the fun things about the National Street Rod Association is you have to drive your car to the event. Driving your car to the event means some of you are going to run into some problems. So even here in Knoxville, if you have a small problem with your rod, where do you go? You got to drive to Michigan. Michigan Hot Rod Association comes to their shows where guys can come, borrow tools, and work on their car and get them up and running. I'm here with Bill Large, who's, in, who's with Michigan. Bill, what kind of problems do you see? Is there a most common problem in well, here at the Nat South down in uh, Knoxville, we've seen a lot of uh, driveline problems this year. It varies year to year, but basically we've got a lot of wheel bearing work, uh, drive shaft U-joint uh, work, we've had uh, rear suspensions come loose, we've had to replace uh, front wheel bearings. So it's primarily the things that keep the cars up off the ground, more or less, you know, and running good. Some of the stuff is just old, you know. These uh, parts aren't always new when they start. And uh, they start driving them after sitting all winter. This is the first event of the year. And maybe the grease got hard. I'm not sure why, but we do see a lot of it. We have a, uh, an ability to fix anything if we get at it soon enough. So we've changed engines and uh, made transmission repairs. But uh, at this show, so far, we've been able to save every one of them. So there was no biggest here that we couldn't fix. You heard it. So if you run into a problem at one of the NSRA events, your next logical step is to drive to Michigan. I'm here with John Shea, who brought what was once a 39 Coast to Coast. Tell us a little bit about what you did with your rod, John. Uh, this is a 39 Coast to Coast sedan, and uh, basically we bought it and cut it up. We've cut it about 30 different places, put a steel top in it with a sunroof, back cut the hoods, did reveals, put a full back door in it, uh, did a lot of body work on it. And sunroofs weren't around back then. Where did you get the sunroof from? It came out of an 87 Silica GT. Nice mix of uh, new and old there. He's even got four-wheel disc brakes, something I love to see on the old rods. We mentioned that what qualifies a car as a street rod is taking an older rod, pre-49, and bringing some modern technology to the rod. Some of that technology is required, some of it's optional. This is where they inspect for the required technology.
This is what Main Street would have looked like back in the 50s. Beautiful lime green 39, coast to coast. And this is Corky Palzinski, the owner. Tell us a little bit about your car, Corky. Uh, it's just a 39 coast to coast. I put it together the last three years and uh, had to hurry to get it together to get it here, but uh, we made it. It's a great color. What do you call this? It's called lime gold. It's a PPG color. It's a, actually a 2005 Mustang color. And, uh, I, I didn't even pick up on the Mustang. Now that you say that, uh -huh. I can see the Mustang yeah. color. And uh -huh. what kind of power plant are you running it with? Uh, 330 horse, 350, a crate motor. Uh -huh. Good deal. And the drivetrain? It's a 350 turbo, 8 inch Ford, four wheel disc brakes, and power disc brakes, and all that. It's a beautiful 39. I want to thank Corky for sharing it with us. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Thanks, Corky. Uh -huh. A beautiful Hudson Terraplane. I'm here with the owner, Glenn Reeves. Glenn, what'd you find uh, when you found it? What condition was it in, and what'd you do to it? I had a 35 I was building, and I seen a picture of a 34 convertible and fell in love because they looked like they had a chop top and had to have it. Looked all over and found this down in Florida. Bought it from the gentleman's son that started the National Hudson Club. Had plexiglass windows in it, uh, duct tape firewall. Uh, running boards beat up and it used to be this color here originally which the top color which is 56 Pontiac turquoise and why it's two-tone now I repainted the car myself and when I did the, I used the new concept that's hard to spot in that PPG makes and the on the fenders third time of painting them I was done so much work I thought let's make it two-tone so people know I painted the car. What kind of power plant do you have in it? Is that uh, original or did you change it out? It's a uh, 350 Chevy with an RV cam. Uh, this is our tenth time down here at least uh, to this show and we love the show here because of the southern hospitality and I'm from up in Richmond Indiana so and we couldn't find a place to park and I went by the pick area then they have rows, so I went back over and parked in the resto rod row and come back and went and checked and found out I won it. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful, Hudson. Thanks for sharing it with us, Glenn. Well, thank you guys for interviewing me, and uh, you do a great job. I love your show. Thanks. a blast here in Knoxville this weekend. I hope you enjoyed some of the great cars that we're able to share with you. And while you're on the website, be sure and click on the community. Check out some of the great rides there. Maybe post a few pictures of your own. I'm Tommy Darrell from Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll see you next time.